of God for him. Man is ignorant about how God views him and how God loves him. This morning I want to talk about deliverance. I'm still on deliverance. My subject is deliverance. And in this subject, we want to read something from 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. But let me pick it from verse 16. What agreement can exist between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, and separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. These are the basic instructions and the basic steps to be separated unto God. God desired to dwell among his people. God desires to stay where his people are. His intention is daily relationship with his make, uh, uh, creation. But his creation doesn't like him. His creation doesn't want to have anything in common with him. So God is not happy at all. Why? Everything that God loves, man hates it. Everything that God has planned for man, man doesn't like it. Man is in total disagreement with God. And therefore our ways have turned away from the ways of God. And our ways are pursuing the ways of destruction. Man view himself in this world. Man always compares himself with this world. The mirror that man sees his beauty, sees his glory, is the reflection of this world. It's very painful unto God, and God is not happy. It doesn't make God glorious at all. He wants to be glorified. The Father wants the Son to be glorified. In John chapter number 15, Jesus said, When you abide in me and my words abide in you, Whatsoever you ask the Father, it shall be done that the Son will be glorified. In worldly time, we said that the Son will be proudful. Thing that makes Jesus glorious is when his children come to embrace who he is. Apostle Paul was admonishing the church of Corinth. And in that city, there were all kinds of idol worship. And I think, and I believe we're looking from the background of this scripture. The people were antagonizing with them. They were mingled themselves. They were measuring themselves up with this culture. This sinful culture that have eaten Christianity. Now Christianity have lost its shape. Christianity has lost its value. Christianity have lost its image in this sinful world. Everything has been turned upside down. And now nobody knows what Christ is. Who a Christian is. And people sometimes send me a question. And ask me can a Christian do this? Can a child of God do this? And most of the time my answer is. How could you find Jesus doing that? Can you picture Jesus Christ doing that? We are talking about deliverance. Come out. Coming out of this world and separating yourself to God is what we call deliverance. Separating yourself for God use. And the Lord said, what agreement? What is the link? What are the identification? What are the similarity? Every father wants his children to look like him. Every mother desires that her children will be like he her. The pride of a parent are that their children will pick up things. When we find some similarities and identification with our children, with our seed, we are so proud. And that is how God is. He wants to be glorified in us. But this time around, when God looks down, he doesn't see the reflection of himself in us at all. 
God does not see the reflection of his image in us. And therefore, Apostle Paul put this question as the Holy Spirit led him. What agreement had this sinful world with us Christians? For we are the temple of God. Don't you know? Don't you know that your body is a very valuable asset for God? Your body is the most important sin for God on earth. Very, very essential. That is why God allowed the Holy Spirit to vacate from heaven to come and dwell on earth because God has found a new heaven on earth. Your body is supposed to be a heaven on earth. Oh, you didn't hear me. My body is supposed to be heaven on earth, a residential place where the Holy Spirit can dwell in. You don't value that. You are using the body to do whatever you want. You are using the body to drink. You are using the body to fornicate. You are using the body to masturbate. You are using the body to make up your face. Don't you know that that body is a valuable asset in the hands of God? If a man can give his body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable asset unto God, I bet you the Holy Spirit can come and dwell in and reveal the mind of God and reveal the purpose of God and reveal the dreams of God to this world. Can you give your body unto him? Can you present your body unto him? And stop presenting your body to fornication. Stop presenting your body to idol worship. Stop presenting your body to gossip. Stop presenting your body to covetousness. Stop presenting your body as a den of thieves. The Lord values your body. The Lord values your body. Are you not aware? Are you not aware that I want to dwell among my people? I will live with them, says the Lord, and I will walk among them. God is walking with us. Angels of God have been released around us, but eyes cannot see them. If the Lord is to open your eyes to see the angels around you 24-7. You will not behave the way you are behaving. If the Lord is to happen, open your understanding to know who you are. You won't talk the way you talk. You won't sleep where you are sleeping. You won't mingle yourself with those filthy things. You won't measure up yourself. You have reduced the standard of God so low. You have reduced the standard of God so low. Because you don't know who you are. And the Lord is calling you, come out. Come out and live for him. Come out and present your body as an asset for him. I will live with them. Why God want to make his dwelling among us? Because he value us. The Holy Spirit has vacated from heaven. Jesus Christ left heaven to come and seek for a dwelling place for the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 15, Whosoever believe in me and obey my commandments, I am my Father will come here on earth and will dwell among them. We want to have our body in you. And the Lord is telling you, why are you giving your body to something that is destroying your body? Why are you measuring your body with a future that is going to be destroyed? Why? Come out! Come out. I want to walk with you. I want to be revealed. If God finds a body. Listen to me sister. Listen to me brother. If a person can dedicate his body to God. God can use it for his glory. You didn't hear me. If you and me can dedicate our body to God. God can use it to attract people to himself. He's done your beauty. It's not how articulative you are. It's not how knowledgeable you are. But how willing you are to surrender to him. He will use that body to glorify himself. He wants to use your body. Are you willing and are you ready to give him that body? God is looking for a body to dwell. Today if you can say, Lord, if you're looking for somebody to love him, can you look on my way? If you're looking for somebody to dwell in his body, can you look on my way? If you're looking for somebody to serve so, can you look on my way? Can you look on my way? Jesus, look on my way. Can you seek the attention of the Lord? Can you? How can I? How can I? Because the body is too occupied with depression. The body is too occupied with drugs. The body it has been given out. Whom are you giving your body to to destroy you? 
The body has been dedicated into idol worship. The body has been dedicated into money making. The body has been dedicated to pride. The body has been dedicated to take it out. Take it from him. Take it from him. I want you to know the Lord wants to dwell in your body. And that is the assets of God. Don't you know that your body is a temple of God? Don't you know? Don't you know that the Lord God wants you to be His glory? He has put His glory on these earthly vessels. That the excellence of our works, the excellence of our doing may not be of us, but it all may be of His glory. The Lord wants to be glorified. Jesus wants to be glorified. My Savior wants to be glorified. He wants His name to be known through you. Are you willing to do that? How determined are you? How ready are you? How hungry are you? And how willing are you to surrender? How willing are you to give Him that chance? Can you say, Lord, look on my way? Can you tell Him to look on your way? Can you tell him to look on your way? Say, Jesus, look on my way. Look on my way. Say, don't you know that your body is a temple of God? Don't you know that God desires a temple? Don't you know that God desires a dwelling place? And he has chosen you to be that dwelling place. He has chosen you to be that dwelling place. If you can give him assets. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, as say as the Lord. Come out from among them and be separate. Touch not the unclean. Don't touch anything that defies you. What are unclean? Unclean are thoughts. And there are feelings. There are ideas. There are suggestions. There are pictures. There are imagination. There are food. There are dresses. There are entertainments. They are what we watch. They are what we hear. They are what we feel. They are unclean. A thing that come and touch this body and defile us. Don't you know that they are unclean things? Don't you know that they defile you? Don't you know that they separate you from God? Don't you know that they try to drop the Holy Spirit away from you? Touch not all unclean. What are you touching today? What are you touching today that God needs to set you apart? You are waiting for God to take you apart, but God is waiting for you to step outside. Step outside and he will, he will hook you like an eagle trying to take a chicken out of sin. The Lord wants to deliver you. The Lord wants to save your soul. But if you are willing to come out, he said, come out among them. Come out among them and separate your soul. Come out among them. It's a choice. It's a decision that you have to make. Don't, don't identify yourself with the sin. Don't identify yourself. Don't see your beauty in the eyes of the world. Don't see your joy in the eyes of sin. Don't see your soul in sin. Don't see your future in sin. Come out among them and be separated from me. Come out because he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God that wants you for himself. He's a jealous God that doesn't want you to show you with sickness. He doesn't want to show you with divorce. He doesn't want to show you with depression. He doesn't want to show you with drugs. He doesn't want to show you with masturbation. My God doesn't want to show you with this world. And therefore he said, come out. Come out and be separated unto me. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're asking yourself, Brother Gabriel, how can I come out? I am in chains. How can I come out? I am in bondage. How can I come out? I'm in slavery. How can I come out? It is in your mind. What you think that is helping you captive is in your mind. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. Oh my God. My God, because he had the keys to the chains. He had the key to the prisons. He had the key to that situation that has held you captive. If you can say, I am coming out to this morning. If you can say, I am coming out. I am telling you that those chains will get rid of. You think that the door is locked. That door is not locked. 
You may think that our prison doors are locked. He is still setting people free out of their prison. As he said, Sadrach and Misak and Abednego, as he said, Elijah, as he said, uh, Paul and Silas, as he said, oh my God, as he said, Peter and, and, and James out of the prison, my God said that he is willing to set you out of that prison. What prison are you in? What prison are you in? The Lord said, work out, work out, work out. If only you are willing to work out. If only you are willing to work out. My Savior is there to let you know that the door is not locked. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. The door that you think is locked is not locked, my dear. The prison door, that anxiety, that depression, ah, that fear that her heart is captive, it is not real. It is not real. Gather yourself together. Gather yourself together and be willing to separate yourself from him. You can make it. You can make it because all that you need to do is to make up your mind. All that you need to do is to decide in your mind that I want to come out. Are you not tired? Are you not tired? Are you not tired? Sister, are you not tired? Brother, are you not tired? Darling, are you not tired of the circumstances that have held you captive? Oh, he wanted to come out. He wanted to come out. I bet you the day that you become tired, the day that you become frustrated, the day that you become tired of that situation, I promise you that will be the end of that destruction. That will be the end of that pain. Until you come to your senses that I want to come out. And today the Lord is telling you, come out. It's a command. Come out. When he says come out, meaning that those angels, those demonic angels powers has been destroyed. His angels are fighting on your behalf. Whatsoever well, you are going through this morning, my Savior has sent me to tell you. It is not true. It is not true. Satan is tormenting you, but it is not true. David said in Psalm 23, Even though I walk in the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because it is a shadow. It is a shadow. When did David write that? Saul was threatening him. Saul has sent people to come and kill David. David was running for his life. And he said, my God is able to secure me. The hand of the Lord is protecting me. So what I am going through, I am not afraid. I am not afraid of the threatening of AIDS. I am not afraid of the threatening of Hebola. I am not afraid of the threatening of suicide. That sort. I am not afraid. Why? Because greater hand is able and is willing to take me out if I decide to work out. Sister, you have stood there for a long time. You are waiting for a pastor to lay his hands upon you before you go out. You don't need a pastor. Make up your mind that I want to come out. Determine that I want to come out. Oh, I tell you the doors are not locked. The prison doors are not locked. Can't you see? Can't you see? Can't you see that the doors are not locked? You feel that you are in chains. What kind of chains? Oh, brother, I am in chain, but there is power in the name of Jesus Christ to break every chain of addiction. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, the chains are in your mind. Darling, the chains are in your mind. Your limitations are in your mind. They are not real. And that is what Satan does. He threatens you. You are going to die. And because of fear of death, you do so many evil things. You contaminate yourself with so many choices that destroys your life. But I am here to tell you, my Jesus is saying, I hear a voice. I hear a voice saying, Phyllis, come out. I hear a voice saying, Sandra, come out. Markia, come out. Jude, come out. Oh, mention your name. That name. The Lord is saying, come out. Come out. Come out. Separate yourself, say as the Lord. Touch not on clean, and I will receive you. Touch not on clean. Touch not those things that are separating you from your God. And my God will receive you. You are not a rejected. You have not been refused. He will not deny you. He still loves you. He still loves you. He still wants you to be part of him. He still loves you. He still loves you. Oh, have you heard that word before? 
Oh, have you ever heard that word before? Sometimes, sometimes people that we love so much, we hurt them. Sometimes people that we love so much, we break their hearts. And they become angry a little bit. A little bit, but they still love us. Oh, how many times, how many times have I felt that my wife doesn't love me anymore? Uh, how many times? How many times? How many times? But when the broken relationship, when the broken communication are, are connected together, and she looked at my face and she said, I love you. I love you, darling. Well, that is what my Savior is telling me. Oh, maybe your husband says he, he doesn't love you anymore. But I tell you, Jesus loves you. Maybe there is somebody that is rejoicing you. I am talking to a brother. A brother came to me this morning and said, Pastor Gabriel, please pray for me. I am feeling that I'm being rejected. His man rejecting you. Why are you responding to my rejection? Why are you responding to, to my rejection? Your Savior still loves you. Oh, he still loves you. And that is all you need. There is somebody who cares for you, my God. There is somebody who cares for you. Darling, maybe you are standing on the crossroad. Men have rejected you. Men have despised you. Men have ignored you. They have abused you. Oh, they have abused you. They have abused you. Oh, my God. Men have abused you. Men have abused you. But I'm telling you, my Savior still loves you. He still loves you. My Jesus still loves you. My Savior still loves you. Don't respond to, don't respond to what men are telling you. Darling, don't respond to what men are telling you. Respond to what Jesus is saying. He says, separate yourself from your thought. Distance yourself from that desire. Distance yourself from that feeling. Distance from yourself from that anxiety. He still loves you. He still loves you. He still loves you. Mandelelelebo Shakaya. He said, I want to be your father. I still want to be your father. I want you to be my daughter. I want you to be my son. My God has not rejected you yet. He has not taken your name out of his book. He has not deleted your name yet. He has not temporarily. Temporarily, you might be feeling that it is too late. But I'm telling you, he still loves you. So long as you still have breath, come back. Come back, there is somebody that cares for you. There is somebody that cares for you. He is an almighty. He is a gracious God. When you separate yourself from unclean sin, he will accept you. If you can separate yourself from what is Causing you to be unclean. He is sending me this morning to tell you, not to prophesy, but to tell you that he still loves you. He still loves you. How far have you gone? Oh, Isaiah chapter 52 verse 11. Depart, depart. Go out from there. Depart, depart. Touch nothing unclean. Go out of the midst of her. Purify yourself. You who carry the vessels of the Lord. Oh my God. Don't you know that your body is the vessel? Don't you know your yes. I said, Brother Gabriel, how can I purify myself? When you bring your soul, when you bring your thought, when you bring your feeling, when you bring your emotion, when you bring your desire in line with his will, in line with his, with his commandment, he still, he still loves you. He still loves you. His, are you a vessel honor unto God? He has put his treasure on this vessel. He has put his treasure on this glorious vessel. And therefore the vessel is looking glorious. The vessel is looking glorious. Sister, don't you see that you are beautiful? Your beauty is not for filthy things. You, you are handsome, brother. That handsomeness, you are intelligent. You are more intelligent than any person in your environment. You see yourself like that. Why have you given yourself to the devil? Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 17 I did not sit in the circle of merrymakers I did not sit in the circle sister you are you've given yourself to merrymakers you are making merry dancing with sinners oh, pro, posting with sinners uh, cheering with sinners and thinking that you are going to cheer up in the Lord come out don't feel comfortable in your sin. 
Don't feel complacent in your evil ways. Come out. Come out and don't be like them because you are different. You are different. At one time, I wanted to be like them, and the Lord said, No, Gabriel, you can't be like that. Man, as you, my son, the Lord is telling you, Chester, man, as you, Phyllis, man, as you, Angie, you cannot be like one of them. Don't you know that you are different? The day that I accepted that, today, that would be the breaking point of your life. I know somebody is crying. Somebody is crying. The Lord sent me on your way to tell you that you can't be like one of them. The Lord look at my eyes. I want you to be a fornicator. I want you to be a masturbator. I want you to watch pornography. I want you to be a thief. I want you to be a criminal. I want you to be a womanizer. I want you to change women. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit look at me and say, Gabriel, you can't do that. You value more than that. The day I started to value myself above what the world was looking at me. The way I started to see myself above how the world was projecting me. I separated myself for the Lord. And I said, Lord, if you can use this one, you can. If you really want to use it because I have nothing. I have nothing in me. I have no beauty. I have no glory. I have no certificate. I am not educated. I am unschooled. I have nothing to hold back from you. But if you can use this, if you can use it, throw that challenge to God, and God will make a miracle out of your life. You want a miracle? You want a miracle? That miracle will not begin until you say, Lord, I have surrendered unto you. You are waiting, God. You are waiting for God to deliver you. But God is waiting for you to come out. He is telling you, come out. When He told Mary and Martha, Mary and Martha, your brother Lazarus is coming out. They didn't believe. They said, Lord, He is thinking. Your problem might be smelling. <laughs> Lawyers might have given up. Your judges might have given up. But I'm telling you, the higher judge, the higher judge has spoken. The higher judge has spoken. He is telling you, you are not at the end yet. You are coming out. Break that chain that hurts you, Capsi. People have let you feel so dirty. People around you let you feel so dirty. I want to lift you out from that clay. I want to lift you out from that chain. I am saying, come out. You worth more than that. You deserve more than that. You worth more than where you have projected yourself. Come out. Come out. The doors are open. The gates are wide open. There is no limitation. There is no limitation on your path. I tell you, there is no limitation on your path. You have placed that limitation upon yourself. Take it off. Take it off. Oh, brother, I've never went to school. And so what? God doesn't need human wisdom. Oh, brother, I don't have a certificate. And so what? I am not a dean. And so what? Who told you that you need ordination? You need ordination to make heaven. Who told you that you need man's approval to be where God wants to project you? Come out, set that limitation off from yourself. You put the limitations off to yourself too much. People are always letting you feel that you don't deserve that. You don't deserve that. I'm telling you, you deserve. I am telling you that you deserve. Pure humanity will let this world will let you feel sad. Jeremiah said, I did not sit in the circle of merrymakers. Neither did I sit in the circle of people that mock me. Don't sit among the mockery. Don't sit among people that let you feel you're, you're worthless. Don't sit among people that doesn't value you. Don't sit among people who doesn't see the glory of God in your life. Don't sit among them. You have competed with the loser for a long time. You have competed with those people that let you feel that you are nothing you are useless oh darling come out come out say I am coming out I am coming out my chains are broken my future is brighter the glory of God is higher than anything there is no limitation that man can put on you you are the only person that can put a limitation upon yourself I say you are coming out you are coming out. You are coming out, my brother. You are coming out, my sister. You are coming out. Shout, I am coming out. 
Make a declaration because I hear a sound. I hear your son, my Lord, a son. If you can stand and set my people free, I will set them free. If you can shout and they can believe in your voice, that they can come out of that wretched situation. And stop Mary making in their star story. Yes, yeah, sister, you have a star story, but I'm, I'm not interested in that star story. Ah, behind that star story, there is a joy. Jeremiah said, I didn't sit in the circle of merrymakers, nor did I exalt because of your hand which is upon me. Begin to see the hand of God upon you. Value the hand of God upon you. He said, when you were a black cloth in your mother's womb, I knew you. I have ordained you. And now you are saying that you are not called. Your bishop is saying that you are least qualified. Make yourself ready to be picked. Make yourself, there is no limitation, my brother. Oh, Pastor Emmanuel, there is no limitation. We have put a limitation upon ourselves. It is not God. It is not God that told you what you are thinking. It is Satan. And today, if you can make that limitation to become a platform, if you can make that limitation become a platform, and yet, I am coming out. Let somebody shout, I am coming out. No mediocrity. I am coming out. No limitation. I am coming out. No boundary. No barrier. When the Lord calls, when the Lord called Lazarus, nothing could help him captive. Although he was bound, but the Bible says that he was jumping. He was jumping. Although he was bound, but he was jumping. The voice is calling you, come out. Come out. Come out and stop that pity party. Come out and stop that excuses. Come out. Oh my God. There was a, a man on John chapter 5. A man in John chapter number 5. He was sitting at the pool of Bethesda. When Jesus told him today is your day. He said there is nobody around to let me go. There is nobody around. He was looking around to find somebody. And Jesus said I am that somebody that you are looking for. Why are you looking for your redeemer from distance? He is standing beside you. You are looking for your redeemer that you need. Uh, you, you need to send money to a pastor. You need anointed man to, to lay his hands upon you. My, my, my dear, you are more anointed than any person. You have looked down upon yourself for such a long time. Take that glasses out. Take that glasses out you can see clearly. Take that glasses out because you can still see. Satan has put glasses upon your eyes. You can't see clearly. Let my Savior put a new glasses. Magnify glasses. Magnify glasses that you can see through. See in the eyes of God. Hear in the ears of God. Touch with the hands of God. Walk in the feet of God. Speak with the voice of the Lord. And you will see a miracle. Begin to activate that. Hallelujah. I have come to stir that thing up. I have come to stir you up. Darling, I have come to stir you up. Oh, you are, you, you, you are higher than how you see yourself, you know. You are called here with Jesus Christ. You are anointed. You are anointed with Jesus Christ. No excuse. No excuse. He is closer than us that we ever thought. He is closer than us. Oh, my God. My God. My God, the day that you begin to think where your mind goes, the man will go. I tell you, the day that you begin to think that you want to come out, you see the doors are open. Oh, where the door open all this world, and I didn't know the Lord said, yes. The door has been open. It has been waiting for you. I want to be charismatic a bit. You are praying for husband. Your husband is very close to you, but your eyes are closed. You are praying for work. The work is very close to you, but your, your eyes are closed. Ask God, Lord, open my eyes that I can see well. Open the eyes. What kind of eyes? The eyes of faith. Open my eyes of faith. You are coming out with the eyes of faith. You are coming out with the legs of faith. You are coming out with the hands of faith. You are coming out with the ears of faith. With the nose of faith. With the tongue of faith. Speak yourself out of that situation. And take that limitation off because Jesus took it away 2,000 years ago. 
Before you and me were born, he has already taken it off. <laughs> Don't allow any pastor to tell you, oh, you were born with, uh, with deficiency. You were born with all kind of uh, 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 deficiency. Oh, you are disabled. Who told you? The world have disabled you. The world have disabled you. I see people without limb, without people without a hand. They are swimming. I see a man without hands. He is preaching the gospel, serving souls. Look at you, seven feet tall. And you are like a chicken, shaking. I am afraid the devil is a liar. Have you seen that a man without arms? He is casting out the devil. <laughs> he is casting out demons. The demons that have put people in bondage, that have put people in limitation. That man goes around, he is jumping, he has no legs, he has no mind. Yeah, he swims like a fish. I can't swim. When I see that brother, I see that Gabriel, you have put that limitation upon yourself too much. Oh my dear, oh my sister, oh my brother, who told you you cannot conceive? Say, say I told you, I know you believe that. Don't believe that. You believe the word that the enemy has pronounced over your life for such a long period of time. You need a deliverance. And deliverance can only take place when the truth are upholded. The day that you accept the truth, the woe. This is not me. That day. The day that you accept the truth about you. And the Lord said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I ordain you to be a peculiar person, a royal priesthood, a person that share my inheritance in heaven with me. Tell yourself I'm coming out. I don't know the limitation that you put yourself. Oh, Jeremiah said, because of your hand upon me, for you fill me with righteousness. You fill me with greatness. You fill me with joy. You fill me with peace. When Satan is throwing his nuts, just reject it. Satan, this is not me. When do you hear the enemy talking about you? Ask him, who are you talking about? I, I, I hope you are not talking about me. Don't let Satan feel comfortable. When he's bringing his foreign darts. When he's throwing them on you. Don't let him feel comfortable at all. Satan, are you sure you're talking about me? With a shield of faith. This is what the Lord is saying about me. With a shield of faith. This is what my Savior is saying about me. Don't accept it. Your hand is upon me. The hand of God that is upon you is the hand that brings joy. The hand of God that is upon you is the hand that brings you victory. You will triumph. You will triumph. If my God was able to set Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the furnace fire. If the Lord was able to save Joseph from prison. If the Lord was able to preserve Isaac's life. If the Lord was able to fulfill all the promise that he gave to Jacob. Go to Bible. And reflect on what God has done. If God was able to save Lot because of Abraham from Sodom and Gomorrah. I bet if my Savior Jesus Christ is able to save you because of his blood. Because of his blood. He made a covenant with Abraham. Because of that covenant that he made with Abraham. He saved the life of Lot. His wife didn't want to be saved. It's only those who don't want to be saved who go to hell. Do you want to go to hell? The world wants to take you to hell. Every sin that you have accepted, oh, this is, oh, this is my weaknesses. Hey, are you sure? No, you don't have weaknesses. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You might have limped into it, stumbled into it, but that is not you. Talk to yourself. That is not me. Today, I place a different mirror in front of you. And that mirror is Jesus Christ. Look at your face and look at his face. Look at him. Look at him. Do you see your face in him? Your father wants to be like, he wants you to be like him. Can you get a reflection of Jesus in your life? He wants to be a, you become a righteous person because he's a righteous person. He wants you to be saved because he is saved. He wants to bring you peace because he's a man of peace. He has spoken 2,000 years ago that it is finished. Why are you still in that situation? Come out. Come out. He's more than able. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4 in closing. Revelation chapter 18 verse 4. <clears throat> then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, 
so that you will not share in her sins and contract any of the plagues. He was talking about the woman of sin. The woman of sin. Ladies and gentlemen, Babylon the great. The great harlots. The woman that have caused so many women on this earth to lose their glory. The Lord said, come out of her, sister. The woman that have caused so many women not to see themselves in the, in the sight of God. You see yourself as a female. But my God is not a female. That is where, that is where you are going out. You are not a female. You are not a female, sister. You see that long hair in your eyes. It's not true. You have a curly hair. You see that makeup in your face. Sister, that's not you. You have a glorious radiant that shines and sparkles. The devil is giving you fire to rub on your face, which you have no idea of. The devil is giving you snake, the handband, the chains, the necklace. The devil is giving you serpents. He is mocking you, says, says, says. Today, if you can look in the mirror and see Jesus, your joy will be full. Don't allow that woman to drag you into hellfire. Remove everything that belongs to him out. My God made you in his image. Do you think that Jesus' image reflects on your face, brother? Look at the way you have shaved your beard. Look at your haircut. Can you see Jesus in your life? The way you dress, can you see Jesus in? You must be delivered. When your mind begins to reflect on Christ, he said, come out and don't share. Until you come out, you share the destruction of the enemy. But you don't worth that. You're worth more than that. You deserve joy. You deserve peace. You deserve harmony. You deserve hope situation. Hopeful situation. A place where your soul will dwell forever. Pray with me and say, Jesus, forgive me for not seeing myself the way you see me. Forgive me for turning my eyes away from you. Forgive me for giving my attention to the enemy. Forgive me for giving up on you and setting my desire in the devil. Lord, this morning, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Set me apart, oh God. Set me apart. I want to be free. I believe in your word. Therefore, I am coming out. Tell the devil, say, devil, leave me alone. I am going out. Jesus has set me free. And I am in free indeed. Declare yourself. Say it. If you don't say it, you will remain there. Tell the sin that you are dwelling in that today is the last day. Tell the situation that you are going through that today is the last day. I am going out. Out! I am going out. Out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Be separated. I break every power of darkness against you. I destroy and demolish every activity. Brothers and sisters, pastors around, pastor, you must please help me in prayer. Oh, brothers and sisters, Kakandi, please help me in prayer. All of you who are listening to me, who are saints, let us set some family members free. Let us set some pastors free. Let us some people free who are in bondage. Father, in the name of Jesus, let somebody be saved. Let my family members be saved. Let my relatives, my friends, let my church members, let them be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Set your people free. Set your people free that they may be free. Set my wife free. Set my children free. Set my mother free. Somebody needs to be set free in your mouth. Set them free. Let us take them out of the hook. Let them take them out of the hook. The enemy wants to destroy them and let us snatch them. He that has set set free is free indeed. Yes, you are free indeed. In the name of Jesus, you are coming out of depression. You are coming out of suppression. You are coming out of disgrace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the way that you have been disgraced, you have been lifted up. In the way that you have been humiliated, you have been exalted. Say, I am Coming out in the name of Jesus. Be free. 
Be free. Be free from masturbation, fornication, pornography, lesbianism, alcoholism. Be free. Be free from mental issues. Be free from heart problems. Be free from cancer. Be free from pneumonia. Be free in the name of Jesus from AIDS. I cast every sickness. Mention your sickness. I have seen people being delivered every now and then. A young lady for two years ago came to me and that lady had AIDS. Jesus healed her. <laughs> Jesus healed her. He is setting people free. Are you a witch? Do you have demonic power destroying your life? Now the hand of the Lord is laid upon you. And therefore step out today. Step out in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for setting your people free. Thank you, Lord, what you said I should come and do. I have done it. And I know and I believe that a chain from somebody is broken. I'll give you praise. I'll give you honor. In Jesus' name. The highest freedom that you need is to accept Jesus as your personal savior. If you haven't, I'm telling you, you will go back. So I want you to confess Jesus as your Lord. Ask him to forgive you all your sins and remove everything that Satan has put on you. Anything that the world has put on you, remove them because that God didn't give it to you. And the Lord is warning you, if you continue to dwell in that, you will face the plague. Come out among them and separate yourself unto the Lord. Dedicate your life unto God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable only unto him, not unto men. Ask yourself, is your life acceptable unto God? Ask God, are my ways acceptable unto you? Challenge yourself. Put yourself in a position and challenge yourself every day. Ask God, are my ways, are my ways pleasing unto you? And seek his approval. And don't waste your time here on earth. Don't delay. Because time is fast spent. We don't have many days here on earth. Therefore, whatever you are doing, do it on time. If this message is changing you, my name is Brother Gabriel. I'll be very happy. Share this message with your family, friends. You can copy it. You can do whatever you want it. Because it's the message from the Lord. It's the Bible that I read. And the Holy Spirit just spoke through me. And I believe that you can share it with your brothers and sisters. And they will be delivered. In the name of Jesus, there is power that you have never known. You have never come to realize the power in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is more powerful than any power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, Brahima. God bless you. Pastor Ayezi from uh, Canada. It's my faithful brother. There are some people, they come into your life and they bring a change. This brother brought fire in my life. Where I am now is one of the members that helped me to be where I am. God bless you, brother. I will always love you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you for watching this video and sharing it with the brothers and sisters. And I believe that this message is going out of the world and people are going to be delivered. See you later this afternoon. Continue to watch my programs on YouTube. My name is Pastor Gabriel Adadi on YouTube. On Facebook, Gabriel Adadi or Love. Love is my wife. We share messages on WhatsApp. Anywhere you relate to those names, Gabriel or Love Adadi. Please affiliate with us. And I bet you change will come on your way. Jesus is the one doing it, by the way. But we are the vessel that have availed ourselves. And then the Lord is doing what he wants to do. We love you and God bless you all. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow at the same time. Watch the same time. Deliverance time. God bless you. Amen.